Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look and installing the Eco Hitch trailer hitch receiver on a 2022 Toyota RAV4. Now adding a hitch to any vehicle really opens up options of what you can do with your vehicle and sometimes there are some drawbacks and one of the questions a lot of times people have are, are my hands-free liftgate is it still gonna work with that hitch in place? And the answer is yes. Uh, it is gonna be a little bit trickier. Normally you can kind of just go in that center portion and it'll work. Um, now there's a hitch in the way, so you do have to be a little bit careful. It's gonna be a little bit more finicky, but if you get it in the right spot off to the side, you can get it to work. So it, yes, it will be a little bit more tricky, but overall I think having a hitch really outweighs that small convenience. Now this is what your hitch is gonna look like when it's installed. And the great part is, this is gonna be a hidden cross tube. So all that you're gonna see hanging down is gonna be the two inch by two inch receiver tube opening and the safety chain loops as the rest of the hitch is hidden behind the rear fascia. And two inch by two inch is gonna be kind of the most standard size for accessories. So you're gonna have tons of options of bike racks, cargo carriers, or ball mounts, whatever life throws your way, you should be able to find something. Now all of your accessories are gonna stay in place with a five eighths pin and clip. Now this is is not included with the hitch so a lot of times your accessories will come with one which is a nice added feature but if you want to pick up an extra or a locking version we have those available here at e-trailer and the locking ones are really nice because once you have your accessories in place you can lock this in and you can leave it on the back of your vehicle without having to worry that someone's going to come by and take your accessory safety chain loops are nice and easy to get to so if you plan on pulling a trailer you can get a standard s hook on there no problem even a larger clevis style will go on there and speaking of towing, let's talk about capacities. This thing's rated pretty well with a gross trailer weight rating of 5,000 pounds, which is gonna be the weight of the trailer plus the accessories loaded onto it. You also have a tongue weight rating of 750 pounds, which is gonna be the downward pressure that's put on the inside of the receiver tube opening. So that's gonna be a lot of your cargo carriers, bike racks, suspended accessories. And with that weight, you could really load this up with a four bike bike rack and all the bikes or a cargo carrier with a bunch of vacation things. And it's not gonna really overdo that 750. That's a pretty hefty number there. Now, keep in mind before you just hook up and tow, you're gonna wanna check the vehicle's owner's manual to see what it's capable of towing and compare that with the hitch as well as your other components that you're hooking up to the trailer. Take the lowest of those numbers and that way you're not uh, overloading it. We wanna make sure that you stay safe. Now many times you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have clearance away from your rear fascia. So whether you're hooking up to a trailer or having some of those suspended accessories that stow in a folded position, you wanna make sure you're not gonna hit the rear fascia. And this one here is pretty far out. So you, you should be pretty good on most of them. It's four inches. So I don't worry too much if you pick up a cargo carrier or bike rack that it's gonna cause any issues. Now, as far as ground clearance, we're coming in right at 14 inches. And that's important. Um, so when choosing accessories, you want to make sure that you have a decent amount of ground clearance. 14 inches is pretty good. Keep in mind, though, when you have suspended accessories, as you go up an incline, they're going to want to tilt towards the ground. So just something to keep in mind when you have those loaded up. This is also an important measurement for if you need to pick up a ball mount for your trailer. You can measure the coupler and then determine whether you need a rise or a drop to get that perfect setup. Now, as far as installation goes, this one's actually pretty straightforward. You do need to lower down the muffler to gain access to get that hitch up in place. And you will have to trim a little bit just for clearance here so that hitch can live perfectly on the fascia, but it, you're not gonna see any of that. Uh, and the hitch fills that spot pretty well. Now, one of the tricky parts is the frame rail on the passenger side is pretty tight. So you may have to pick up a crow's foot extension um, for the torque wrench. And that way you can really get those properly torqued because a normal socket and torque wrench might not be able to fit in there. But I'm gonna walk you through all the steps. That way you can get your hitch installed. Let's take a look at that. We're gonna begin our installation by lowering down our muffler, and that's gonna give us the clearance to get our hitch in place. Now, if you're doing this in your driveway or garage, you can put a block of wood or something along those lines uh, to support the exhaust, because once we take it off the isolators, it's gonna to wanna to hang down, and we don't wanna cause any damage upstream. So I'm on a lift, I'll be using a cam buckle strap to create a nice cradle here. Um, so I'll go ahead and support it here. And if you've never taken off an exhaust isolator, it's actually pretty easy. Sometimes they'll fight you. Um, what I recommend is using a soapy water solution to kind of help lube it up. That way it pries off a little bit easier. So there's gonna be a total of three. We have one on our driver's side, one on our passenger side, and then attached to our rear cross member here, we also have another. So I'll show you how to pry these off. Again, I'm gonna kind of just soak this with some soapy water to help move it. 
And a pry bar works really well. If you don't have a pry bar, you can use a long flathead screwdriver and kind of utilizing the exhaust as my fulcrum point, you can kind of just pry on this. And these do move around a little bit, so don't be surprised if it kind of fights you. And also if you need to move the exhaust, sometimes that'll also help. So go ahead and get these popped down. Now it doesn't matter if you use the top or the bottom ones, uh, as long as you get these popped off, but really utilizing the exhaust as a, again, a leverage point to kind of pry these off will make it a little bit easier. Now your kick panel sensor cable here is gonna be located in the bracket. And so when cutting, we can just simply kind of raise this up and it should be out of the way. You just wanna make sure you're not damaging that cable. Uh, if you really want to, you can technically just pry out on this end. It's just kind of snapped into place. And if you want to, you can move this all the way over. That way you know for sure you're not gonna cut it. So now we need to mark where we're gonna be cutting. So measuring from uh, our plastic push pin holes that we had, we have a right at 14 and a half. Um, so from there we can measure seven and a quarter and that should give us the center mark. And so I'll go ahead and get my paint marker and mark that. Now I've gone ahead and used painter's tape to mark out where we're gonna be trimming. So from our center mark, uh, you'll see that this span is, should be two and five eighths or pretty close to that. Now, depending if you have a hybrid model or not, that's gonna depend of how far you're gonna be cutting. Ours is not, so we have four inches here. So having painter's tape is a really nice option because it helps follow a nice clean straight line. Um, so as far as cutting this, again, make sure that that uh, bracket's out of the way where we had our um, kick panel. And also you can use a Dremel, you can use a, a pair of snips. I use a multi-tool as it gives me a nice clean line, but whatever you have, go ahead and cut this section out. Now with that section cut out, we'll go ahead, take our tape off, and then you can take a file or even honestly a knife blade works pretty well. Just rub it along the edge to get some of those burrs taken off. So with that cut out, this bracket, um, it's obviously pretty flexible as we found out. So I don't think we need to trim this. Our hitch should just kind of sit here, but we do want to put our cable back in place. And then next we're going to be heading to the outside of our frame rail. And Toyota's done a huge favor for us. Uh, there's stickers that cover up these weld nuts and these are going to help protect any rust or corrosion from building up and that makes it a lot easier to get your hardware in place. Other manufacturers don't do that and it, and it can be a big pain to get done. So we'll go ahead, get these peeled off and you're gonna have two on the other side as well. Um, once we have those taken off, then we have the holes ready for our hitch to go up. And these are kind of tricky. You can kind of poke in the center um, and then just kind of peel at them, but you may have to work at them for a bit. Now with an extra set of hands, we're gonna get our hitch lifted in place. Um, you may have to kind of just work it up over the exhaust to kind of get this aligned here on the frame rails. And your hardware, you're gonna to wanna to have this handy. And we're gonna just get one hand tighten on each side. Now there's a split washer and a flat washer. So get those aligned and get these hand tightened or at least one started on each side. And having one started on each side is gonna support the hitch, making it easier to get the rest of our hardware in. And once you have that supported, you get the rest of the hardware just hand tightened in. Now we'll, we'll go ahead and tighten down our hardware using a 19 millimeter socket. Now you might've noticed when putting the hitch up, the passenger side's quite a bit tighter. So to get anything in there is gonna be tricky. So having a ratcheting 19 wrench is gonna be the best way to get that snugged up. Now we don't have to get crazy here because we are gonna be coming back with a torque wrench uh, to get those proper torque settings. So just get it snug. Now we're gonna come back with that same socket and our torque wrench and we'll set our torque wrench to the settings found in the instruction manual. 
And this is gonna make sure that it's gonna be tight enough to where it's not gonna come loose over the time uh, that the hitch is on the vehicle, but also it's not gonna be too tight putting stress on those weld nuts. Now, again, pretty easy to get to these here. On that passenger side, it can get tricky. And the best way to get to those is a crow's foot wrench. Um, and this just simply slides, uh, it makes it a much tighter spot here. And this is gonna rotate. So you are, you're gonna have to take your time here. So I'll show you how to do that real quick. Now, something to keep in mind too, these crow's foot wrenches, a lot of times, uh, if it's an open end like this, as you get higher up in the torque, it is gonna wanna try to slip off. So if you can find a boxed end, uh, that's gonna work out generally a little bit better. Um, but this is generally gonna be your best method for getting these torqued down properly. So go through and get all of your hardware properly torqued down. Now at this point, you can determine whether or not you're gonna be using the optional mounting bracket. Uh, this is really nice to solidly mount a seven pole or even a four pole here. Uh, now that is gonna require you cutting this out to make clearance for that seven pole plug. Same with the four pole. Uh, our neighbor actually has wiring installed, but the four pole lives inside the vehicle. So we're not gonna be mounting this up. Uh, if you choose to, again, this is a nice way to kind of have a nice solid place to plug in and out when you hook up to your trailer and pretty easy. You're gonna have a button head bolt here that's gonna pass through and you have a flat head washer as well as a nylon lock nut. There are torque settings associated with those. So again, if you are installing that, refer to your instruction manual. Now at this point, all that's left to do is get our isolators popped back in. Now something I did notice too is we have just enough play here on our top bracket where our cable was to get these snapped back in. So you can go ahead and do that. And that was a look at installation of the Eco Hitch trailer hitch receiver on a 2022 Toyota RAV4.